Okay, so welcome uh, today. Many of you guys watching this will not know me, but basically I talk about every Hurricanes game. And one of the biggest problems I've had as a hockey fan in general, not only Carolina Hurricanes, but it has come up recently because Carolina Hurricanes are actually a consistently good team, so they're getting on more nationally broadcast games, which is a catch-22. It means, you know, my team is relevant and people enjoy watching my team with me as well. Uh, but B, now my team is nationally broadcast, and I really hate NBC broadcast going all the way back to the Stanley Cup Finals. Stanley Cup Finals are still fun to watch because it's the Stanley Cup Finals, but I think my enjoyment is sometimes hampered, especially when Doc Emmerich was commentating, not to take anything away, just his commentary to me didn't appeal to me. I really did not like how much he said ricocheted and all that. If you like Doc Emmerich, that's great. It's a subjective opinion. I really didn't like Doc Emmerich calling the Stanley Cup Finals. That's just me. I honestly completely understand if you did like him, but... I, didn't, I don't like Mike Milbury. I don't like, luckily he was let go of, even though I don't like when people lose their jobs, even if I'm not a fan of how they do their job. But, uh, and then you have Pierre Maguire, not a huge fan of him. And I thought to myself, if ESPN called me up, one of my good buddies over in the headquarters of ESPN called me up and said, all right, Jonathan, you get to pick the what will be our A team. So basically, these would be the people covering the Stanley Cup Finals because obviously every broadcast, you're not going to be able to get everybody together. And I thought to myself, what would be my ideal Stanley Cup Final uh, broadcast team? And so I just decided to do the A team. And then at the end of this video, I'll go off on some people that I think would be fine for the B team but this would be who would I have cover the Stanley Cup Finals. So, for me, I'll start off with the most important position to me, which is play-by-play. -play. And given the fact that I'm a Hurricanes fan, I think everybody knows I'm going to pick before I even say it. There's no suspense. There's no point saving this for last. I'm going to go with John Forslund. I think he is honestly the best play-by-play -play guy. I've even had some non-Carolina Hurricanes fans tell me. John Forsland is the best play-by-play -play guy in hockey. I was very honored to have him be the voice of my childhood, and I think he should be the one to call the Stanley Cup Finals because, honestly, he's one of those guys where when you listen to him call a game, he adds to the impact of the game. And he's animated but not too over the top like Doc Emmerich was to me. He's not a piece of uh, cardboard. You know, like he, he, he finds the happy medium for me better than anyone else and then the second most important uh thing for me is color commentary which is what i would go with eddie olchek actually i know i just criticized nbc's broadcast but for me one of the highlights for the broadcasts would be eddie olchek i think eddie olchek is a very good color commentary is he a little biased towards chicago Yes, but everyone's going to have biases. And I think even John Forsland himself would be biased towards Carolina. I think it's impossible to avoid complete bias. So I get that criticism. But I'm just trying to create a great squad. Now I have in between the glass. And for me, I think someone who deserves a promotion for being in between the glass or, you know, someone who I think is fun, but I didn't put him on the analyst booth. So I'm like, all right, he can be in between the glass. That's Kevin Weeks. Now, I'm a Hurricanes fan, so there might be a little too much Carolina Hurricanes representation. However, there's going to be someone for me as a Hurricanes fan that will surprise you that I want to put him on the broadcast booth. So, But, yeah, Kevin Weeks, I think he's very good. He's very smart, putting him in between the glass to occasionally talk about the play he sees while on the ice. Perfect person to put there. Next up, we have the analyst booth. And for me... You need to have the person who guides the conversation. You need the straight man. And I think it is good to have someone who's willing to voice their opinion. And for me, the three I went with, now they could honestly have no chemistry, and then you have to change it via that way. But for me, the person I want to guide the conversation, she's been in the hockey community for quite a long time. Uh, and I think, you know, she deserves a shot to be 
on the analyst booth. If she doesn't work out, she doesn't work out. And that's Catherine Tappen. Uh, she's been in on NHL tonight for almost a decade now. Why not give her a shot in the analyst booth? I think she's got enough experience. Uh, I'd go with uh, Catherine Tappen for the uh, uh, for the analyst booth. Let her be the one to kind of guide the conversation, similar to what she did on NHL tonight. Now, the straight man I'd have is uh, he's honestly done a great job since retiring, great hockey player, and that's Patrick Sharp. I think Patrick Sharp would be a solid straight man. He is now. I think he should be the one talking about the Stanley Cup Finals and be the one analyzing it. Now for the controversial pick. Now, the person who's going to get people talking, uh, I went with who I feel is the best uh, mid-game broadcast talker of all time, I think he has an unprecedented legacy. He is controversial. I have a feeling a lot of people, especially Canes fans, are going to disagree with me on this. But I'm going to go with Don Cherry. I know a lot of people are going to disagree with me on this. I, I, I can get it because, you know, that's how I would feel if someone picked Mike Milbury. However, I think Don Cherry, he has a legacy. He... Gets a lot of stuff right. He gets a lot of stuff wrong. Um, he is admittedly very biased, but, you know, even when he says stuff I disagree with, he's entertaining by it. Calling the Hurricanes a bunch of jerks, for example. I'll bring up, I know, I'm focusing way too much on the Hurricanes, but I'm a Hurricanes fan, so this is where I have the most experience. But when he called the Hurricanes a bunch of jer jerks, A, I thought it was fun because Hurricanes weren't really a team getting a lot of attention for years now, I always felt like people would always leave out the Hurricanes, you know. So the fact that someone on that level of Don Cherry in Hockey Night in Canada was talking about the Hurricanes was very exciting for me. So there was that. And then he made the Hurricanes probably the most profitable shirt of all time. That shirt might have made the Hurricanes more money than their jerseys that year. So, like, for me, it's like he can do, even when he's criticizing stuff, fun stuff can come out of it. He brought up the... Uh, when he called Pavel Bure a uh, diver and, you know, a uh, uh, squirrel, and they started selling squirrel shirts. Like, he's been involved in a lot of iconic hockey moments, and I think Don Cherry is who I would go with for the ESPN broadcast. Will it happen? Probably not, so don't, don't worry. I'm not actually in charge. You know, my friends at ESPN are only taking uh, recommendations. And last but not least, you have the interviewer. Now, here's the thing. I don't like interviews during games. Uh, they're they're just they, there's no point to them. Like I hate the mid game interviews where they're like, "You're down three one after the second period. How do you feel?" Oh, you know, I think uh, I think we got to score more than the other team. You know, just got to put more pucks in the net than them. You know, we gotta we gotta win battles. You know, we gotta we gotta generally play better than what we've been doing. Like. So every interview goes, or you're up two to one and you have two goals. How do you feel? Oh, you know, doing good. You know, I, I'm very happy about the fact that I got the two goals and able to put the team ahead. You know, it is really, uh, it's really, I really like scoring two goals. Like, like <laughs> you've heard that interview a million fucking times. Like, I, I don't like the mid-game interviews. The one thing I actually am okay with is pre-game interviews. I think it's, you know, like during warm-ups, ask someone to get a pre-game interview I don't really like post-game interviews, especially. I, I If you win, I, I think it's more understandable, but I don't think someone who just lost should have to answer to it. The exception may be uh, being the coach. Uh, but, you know, like, so for me, I think the interviewer is an important role because it, like, you're naturally going to be annoying. And so you want to go with someone who is just naturally likable. I mean, of course, you're probably going to have John Forslund and Eddie Olchek occasionally interview people, but... For me, for the interview, the pregame warm-up interview, I went with someone who's actually not involved in the hockey community that much. However, they are a, she is a vocal hockey fan. Uh, she was great with the interviews and the analyst stuff, and I think she should be a B-team analyst as well. Uh, she was great in that, and I would give that to Renee Paquette, otherwise known as when she was in WWE, Renee Young. And, you know, a lot of people might not know her, but if you're a wrestling fan, you know how great she was. And honestly, as soon as she got released, she's one of the few times where I'm like, someone who is not involved in hockey should get picked up by hockey. She's a great asset to me. Like, she she does a great job analyzing. She can interview. She can't do play-by-play, -play, but she can't commentate, I should say. But everything else, she 
solid job at it. I really can't say enough about what how much what Renee Young added to the commentary booth, which or interview booth and the interviewing and the uh, talking smack, as it was called. You know, and just look up talking smack if you're curious why I'd pick her. So yeah, those are my picks. To summarize, John Forslund for play-by-play, -play, Eddie Olchek for color commentary, Kevin Weeks for In Between the Glass, The Analysts, Don Cherry, Patrick Sharp, Catherine Tappan, uh, and then the interviewer, Renee Paquette. I'll also throw in, I know Catherine Tappan has solid chemistry with uh, Kevin Weeks, so if you want to swap Patrick Sharp and Kevin Weeks, that's totally understandable as well. Uh, but... Those are who I would add. Uh, I want you guys to comment down below. Who would you guys have uh, as your broadcast team if you were in charge of, if your ESPN buddies called you up and said, hey, we want you, we entrust you with hiring who we want to hire as our broadcast team. And yeah, that's it. If you guys like the content I'm producing here on the channel, don't forget to like and subscribe. And if you guys are, like, curious about how I feel about Hurricanes game, stick around, check out some of my other videos if you want. And I'll see you guys tomorrow for the next Hurricanes game.